Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. I'm here to answer where did the reference monitor go? Let's start with the official word from Adobe. In an ongoing effort to modernize our code base and maintain the highest quality, highest possible quality in the app, the reference monitor is removed from Premiere Pro. So that means it's gone and it'll never come back. It's not one of those things, if we scream enough, they'll break, no, it's gone. It was old code. It needed to be taken out of the application um, and it's gone. So Adobe doesn't have to worry about it, write bug fixes for it, fix it. It's just gone. Old code, gone. It's gone. But there are better things to use than the reference monitor. First of all, a lot of people thought the reference monitor was a good way to get a second preview of the program monitor. So they would actually drag that little window into a second monitor and make it big? That makes no sense at all because Adobe has a way better way to do that and that's Mercury Transmit. Transmit will send any uh, source monitor, program monitor, anything out to a second monitor. Here's an example of me using it on my Dell workstation where I do all of my editing and I use a second display all the time for a full screen view of whatever I'm doing. So if I'm in the program monitor or source monitor, I can quickly see that. And I actually stuck a keyboard shortcut F5 because it's not being used anymore because it used to be used for capturing uh, tape. And if you're using tape, you can still use it. You can put any keyboard shortcut, but for me, F5, I turn transmit on and off. Sometimes I need my second monitor to do desktop file operations, and then I go back to working with um, that. Let me show you where it is in, in uh, Lumetri. So I don't have a second display, but if you did, if you go to the Lumetri settings and you open up preferences, then here you can see transmit playback device. And if you have something like a black magic card, you can turn that on, or you're going over the network to Adobe SRT. If I had a second monitor installed, that option would be available here. And sometimes you get options. If you have a second monitor, it just shows up and it, it will be numbered if, if you have more than one and I have three displays. So you simply put that on there and in the uh, edit menu on, Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, keyboard shortcuts. If you just search for transmit, there it is. I've got an F4 on my laptop. All right, that takes care of using the reference monitor as a big secondary display. You don't need that anymore. Let's look at having two versions and, and comparing them because this is what people use the reference monitor for. So I'm in, basically I'm in the essentials workspace, but if I go to the editing workspace, this is my program monitor, this is my uh, source monitor, my timeline down here. If I double click on any one of these clips, I'm gonna load it into the source monitor. If I quickly wanna see something that I'm looking at here, exactly the same, that's what match frame is for. And all you have to do is tap the F key and it matches frame, F, match frame, boom, boom. If you wanted to play this back now, I've, I've got this brought out right now, but let me just show you that if you customize the button, so I'm gonna reset my layout, so that'll be gone. Go back to the button editor and this little guy, gang source and program, if you drag that out so it's a little easier to get to, if I click this now, when I hit play, I'll be playing both of these. So whenever I stop, you'll see the left-hand side will stop. So if I'm going frame by frame, it's following me. So if I wanted to play not just the clip, but because that, that that is just a clip playing in here, it's not the whole timeline. If I drag the, the uh, sequence into the source monitor, make sure it's at the beginning, make sure my timeline is at the beginning, and now gang these, now I'm playing both of these back at the same time. 
So that would be a use that, that people would have for the, the uh, reference monitor. It's the exact same thing. I'm just doing it in source. If this gets out of sync, so if I disable this and then move that and then turn this back on and play, it's going to be out of sync. And maybe you, you want that, but you do have to remember to go back to the beginning, then to turn this on, and go back to the beginning over here. So both of these at the beginning, then turn this on on the program monitor, and then hit play. And now I can use it that way. So that's playing the same sequence in both, and you can load any sequence you want in the source monitor. So I could be ganging the two together and looking at two di completely different sequences, two different clips, lots of different ways to use the gang source and program. You can also use compar comparison view. Let's try that. I'll turn the gang view off. And this button here, comparison view, it's, it's in the, here, it's, it's in the buttons. So it's in there by default. So if you click on comparison view, you're going to get the ability to compare uh, two parts of, for instance, two parts of the timeline if I wanted to. And I could use this to match. In fact, if you go to the Lumetri um, color panel and select that clip. If you go to the color wheels and match, comparison view comes up here, and you can use this to apply color match with or without face detection. So you can see I've color matched those two that way. Uh, you can also use it for just matching a single image if I wanted to. So I could go back up to here and cool this down and see what that looks like on one image, vertical or horizontal or side by side. So the comparison view, very, very useful. This is just another panel. So uh, you could double click on that and make that larger if you want. And if you had the control, uh, control surface, you could actually be editing this with this larger display here. So there's lots of ways for comparison view to be useful, not just for color, but for just regularly looking and comparing uh, two different parts of the timeline if you wanted to. So there are some tools you can use now that the reference monitor is gone. It's not coming back. Uh, you can use these methods to compare different views, different timelines, different effects, whatever you need. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com shop. Donate once or monthly any amount we appreciate all of our donors. Lots of free stuff that you can download on our website too. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to uh, make life a little bit easier if you're missing some things that Adobe is getting rid of.